Next, there is a specific canal system in this porifers through which the circulation of food materials and waste materials are taking place. You can see children, there is a opening called as osculum and finger like projections called as incurrent and excurrent canals. So, the water from the osculum comes into the incurrent and excurrent canals, flows th through this canal system. So, the circulation of food materials and the waste materials are taken out. So, this is the circulating system of porifers. Hello children, welcome to the session. Today, we are going to deal about chapter 5, Diversity in Living Organisms. You can see the pore like structures on their body, right? So, these are called as porifers. So, the next phylum is Cylindrata or Nidaria. The best example is Arelia that is commonly called as jellyfish or the hydra. Next, the cylindrates or nidarians are radially symmetrical. These are aquatic forms. Body is made up of two layers, diploblastic that means children two, ectoderm and endoderm. So, some in live in solitary that is single and few live in colonies. Single living is example is hydra. So, this cylindrate has a specific gastrovascular cavity through which the food and the waste materials are getting in and getting out. So, you can see children here the Arelia, isn't it? The umbrella shaped structure, Arelia, the water intake and the water is expelled. So, this, this has gastrovascular cavity. So, this is you can see the coral colonies, they are living in colonies. The umbrella shaped structure, now these are the tentacles. So, these contains nidoblast, the sting like structures which will kill the prey. So, the next phylum is platyhelminthus. Flatty means flat. Children, this is dorsal side, this is ventral. Dorsal, ventral. These platyhelminthus are dorsoventrally flattened structures. You can see the hooks, this is rostellum, the hooks and sucker like structures through which this tinea solium will get attached to our small intestine. So, this tinea solium is the parasitic animal. So, platyhelminthes are bilaterally symmetrical, dorsoventrally flattened, they are called as flatworms. They are triploblastic, first is ectoderm that is outer layer, mesoderm, middle layer, endoderm, the inner layer. So, there is no true body cavity that is they do not have any coelom. Free living example is planaria, the parasitic is tape worm. It is so small, like a pin net, right? You can see segmented structures, right? So, these are proglottids. You can see there are dorsoventrally flattened, isn't it, children? So, children, these platy helminthes do not have any specific coelom. That means there is no specific coelomic cavity. So, nematoda. Children, I would like to show you an example for this. So, children, this is tube and this is again tube. Tube within tube. Tube within tube. Children, you can see the hollow structure. I am placing the tube. So, within the tube also you have hollow thing. This is called as coelom. In the coelom, the organs and organ systems are embedded. Example is Ascaris lumbricoides, the round worm. So, they are bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic. Body is cylindrical. Cylindrical body. So, pseudo coelom is present, means false coelom is present, are parasitic. So, parasitic worms, elephantiasis, that is filarial worms. You can see the hand of the man is the size of the elephant leg or hand, isn't it, children? So, enterobiasis, that is pinworm. So, this is male ascaris, children, this is female. Now, the male is shorter than the female and has a pointed tail. You can see the pointed tail. Right children? So, this is Ascaris lumbricoides. So, analytes. These are segmented worms. That means the body is segmented. So, they have open circulatory system. You can see. That means children, the blood is not flowing in the blood vessels. It is flowing in the coelom. So, this is the example of closed circulatory system. That means, children, the blood is flowing in the blood vessels. Analytes, these are segmented worms. Bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic, true coelom is present. This allows the true organs to be protected in the body. 
so body is segmented you can see children the segmentation of the body right which the segment lined up one after the other from head to tail now children this is the example of annelids we have earthworm you can see lines on the body that is segments from head to tail so the earthworms are also called as friends of the farmers isn't it children so arthropods arthro means jointed pods means legs so they have jointed legs example is cockroach the prawn and the scorpion so arthropod is the largest phyla it has more than 1 lakh species on earth so the largest phyla in the animal kingdom arthropod means jointed legs bilaterally symmetrical children bilaterally symmetrical means when you divide the organism into half the right and the left side should be same the coelomic cavity is filled with blood open circulatory system and so the blood does not flow in the well defined blood vessels you can see the segmentation isn't it now you can clearly see here children the jointed legs of the scorpion isn't it the jointed legs this is what makes arthropods arthro means jointed pods means legs so mollusca the soft shelled animals so the best example is octopus and the fresh water mussel the snail also children that means the body is so soft and it is guarded by the shell so soft shelled animals the best example for this is as i told you octopus fresh water mussel and the snail they are bilaterally symmetrical the coelom cavity is reduced there is so there is little segmentation and open circulatory system is present and an interesting fact about octopus is children when a predator goes near to it what it does it it gives out a bluish ink like structures that is bluish ink like thing which the it can escape so this is the very clever animal so kidney like organs for excretion there is foot that is used for moving around example is snail and children what is hyderabad famous for yes of course for biryani and then they have famous for the pearls isn't it pearls pink tada margariti fera black lipped pearl oyster so this is the pearl extraction children you can see shell like structure this is pila and this is the foot children slowly it will come out and it will walk so echino dermid echino means children spine derma means skin on the skin they have spine like structures that's the reason they are called as echinodermids you can see in the starfish children they are spine like structures on their surface of the skin and the sea urchins also are under echinodermids in greek echino means spine derma means skin they have hard calcium carbonate structures that they use as skeleton they are triploblastic and coelomic cavity is also present so this is the water vascular system children see you can see here the madreporite for best understanding let's see the video children you can see spine like structures on the body right so this is what makes the starfish under echinodermids so children the starfish has a specific system called as water vascular system water vascular system so these are the arms of the starfish children now water from the madreporite enters now from the madreporite it is entering to the ring canal through the ring canal towards the radial canals from the radial canal they are, they are entering into the tube feet now the structure of tube feet the head is called as ampulla and these are called as Look. by this way the network of water undergoes a circulation distributing the food and nutrients the same way the it is again reversed from the tube feet to the radial canal from the radial canal to the ring canal and the water is exited out by the same mandible right so this is the water vascular system of starfish so children you can see a tree like structure right they have separated the radiata and 
bilateria, radial symmetry and bilateral symmetry. Acelomates that means children they do not have any specific coelom. Pseudocelomates they have but they have false coelom. Coelomates they have true coelom. Acelomates we have seen the examples children platyhelminthes, pseudocelomates nematoda, coelomates the first coelomates are annelids right protostomia and deuterostomia. Then protocordata children in this category we have three urocordata, cephalocordata and vertebrata. Euro means children tail that means the cord ring like structure is present in the tail region. Cephalo means head. So, the chordata is present in the head region, vertebrata. So, we are all vertebrates that means we have vertebral column, isn't it children? So, the best examples are herdmania and amphioxus. Herdmania for urochordata and amphioxus from cephalochordata. So, children this is the biggest phylum we have in the vertebrata. So, let us begin it. So, these are bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic that means ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm, coelomic and segmented with complex differentiation of body, tissues and organs. As I told you triploblastic, ectoderm the outermost layer, mesoderm the middle layer, endoderm the innermost layer. So, the chordates, what are the characteristics of chordates? They have notochord, they have dorsal tubular nerve cord. Children, dorsal tubular nerve cord on the head region is condensed to form the nerves called as brain, isn't it? So, the brain has a spinal cord which is running down towards our vertebral column. These are, these are the characteristics of vertebrates. The triploblastic have paired gill pouches are coelomates, have caudal fin, vertebrates are grouped into 5 classes. So, the vertebrata is classified into 5 categories, spices, amphibians, reptiles, apes and mammals. So, let us know about the each and every phyla. So, first be, uh, before it let us see the terminologies children, oviparous that means egg laying animals are oviparous, viviparous those animals which are giving directly birth to the young ones are viviparous. Poikilothermic that means children cold blooded, these are the animals that are not capable of regulating their body's temperature, it fluctuates as they move in different surroundings. For an example, fish is present, it cannot control its own body temperature, so it changes according to the environment. So, they, they do not have any constant body temperature that is examples are fishes, frogs and crocodiles. Then homeothermic that is warm blood. Animals which keep their body temperature constant level in environmental changes by homostatic mechanisms. Children, we are warm blooded, that means we have constant temperature, we can maintain the constant body temperature. Homeostasis is the ability to maintain a relatively stable internal state that persists despite changes in the world. Examples are humans and cows. Girdles. Children, I want to know, tell you about girdles. Those bones are part of the appendicular skeleton consisting of bones of limbs and upper and lower. That means children, those are movable. Girdles children, pectoral, hands and legs, hands and legs, upper, lower, upper, lower, upper we are having hands, lower we are having legs. So, let us consider this as pectoral and legs as pelvic, right? Spicious. So, let us begin the first phylum that is spices, that are, those are cold blooded animals have fins and tails, branchial respiration have two chambered heart. So, branchial respiration, children you can see for an example take my hand as the gills, now when you pour water what happens this is the gill pouch, the water has dissolved oxygen, so the gills absorb the dissolved oxygen in the water, so this is the um, respiration in the fish that is branchial respiration. You can see the water from the mouth is entering into the fish and going to the gill filaments through which the dissolved oxygen is taken up by the gills. Fins, children as I told you this is dorsal, this is ventral, dorsal, venter, pectoral and pelvic girdles right. The same way the fish also have this. So, this is dorsal fin, second dorsal fin pectoral fin, pelvic fin, anal fin, caudal. Caudal means children tail. 
So, with the help of this fence, it is able to swim. These are the examples of fishes children. Amphibia. Amphi means both. Means it can live both water and land. In the larval stages, they live in water. In the adult stages, they live in land. The best example for amphibia is frog. Young live in water, but adults live on land, smooth slimy skin and lays eggs. Poikilothermic heart is three chambered. Undergoes hibernation and estivation. Children, when do we see frogs? Yes, usually in the rainy season. What about the summer season and the winter season? Yes, they go to sleep. Yes, in the hibernation. Hibernation is the process where they go to sleep in the winter. So, hibernation is also called as winter sleep. Estivation. They go sleep in the summer. So, estivation. Estivation is also called as summer sleep. Right? So, to avoid the unavoidable circumstances, unfavorable conditions, this frog undergoes hibernation and estivation. Isn't it children very interesting? Right. So, this is the other example of amphibia children. It's the office. This is also called as blind snake. It exhibits parental care. That means it takes care of the eggs. Reptiles have dry skin and scales, lays eggs, breathe air through lungs, cold blooded animals. Most of them have three chambered heart, incompletely divided four chambered heart. Though, so, the snake, the tortoise is the best example. Children, the crocodile have four chambered heart and they have thecodont, that means the teeth are firmly fixed on the jaws. Okay. Aves, children, the aves, birds have feathers, two wings and claws. Children, this is the pectoral girdle. What about the aves? These are modified into wings, isn't it children? Wings. So, they lay eggs, warm-blooded animals, four-chambered heart. So, these are the feathers. So, children, just imagine when they are flying, what is the mechanism which is helping them to fly? Just imagine these are, these are, these fingers are the feathers. They have interlocking mechanism, children, interlocking mechanism. So, the air is not going through it. This is helping them to fly. Example is eagle and emu. Mammals, suckle young ones, feed babies with milk, skin covered by hair or fur, breathe air through lungs, give birth to fully formed young ones. That means internal fertilization takes place. So, mammals are of three types children, land mammals, marine mammals and flying mammals. Land mammals, marsupials, primates and rodents. Marsupials feed and care their young ones in their sacks. We know the best example of marsupial is kangaroo. You know children, the, the born kangaroo is this much of length, this much, this much small. In the pouch, that is marsupial pouch, the mother kangaroo will take care of the baby kangaroo with the marsupial pouch. Primates, so they are well developed hands, feet with fingers, toes can judge distance, very intelligent social animals, form bonds with family and friends. So we are all primates, isn't it children? We are bonding with family and friends, we have five digits, isn't it five digits fingers and toes. We can able to judge the social distance, isn't it? The rodents, the gnawing animal, large incisor teeth, two parts, used like chisels to gnaw on hard foods. Okay, children, I want to show the dental formula of human beings. 2, 1, 2, 3. 2, 1, 2, 3. Incisors, canines, premolars, molars. Incisors, canines, premolars, molars. So, these incisors are gnawing type in the rodents. With the help of the incisors, they are chising the food. Marine mammals, which grow and live in the sea water, some only have sparse covering of hair, that is sea, dolphin and walrus. Flying mammals, so children, the best example is bat, echolocation, nocturnal, means they move out in the night. We are not nocturnal, but bats are nocturnal. They go out for the food hunting and prey in the night. That's the reason they are called as nocturnal. Live in the tree hollows and caves. What we have learnt? Invertebrata, protocordata, vertebrata, types of mammals. 
Platypus or echidna is a group that forms a link between reptiles and mammals. Why? Think and write about some characteristic features that that these would have. Make a flowchart of invertebrates in the kingdom Animalia based upon their structures and characteristics. Fourth, explain how animals in vertebrates are classified into further subgroups. For better understanding of the concepts, solve the worksheets. Please visit the official website of SCRT. So children, I hope this session have enlightened you the phylums of invertebrata and vertebrata through the specimens. Thank you. अचलुलम्मा नेरुगा प्रतियंति गड़पा चेरगा मैं भविता के भरोसा दूर दर्शन में दिखा